rapes are committed by someone known to the victim. So there's this mindset that the, very few times you do see somebody going on the road and people jump and rape the person. It happens, but it's not very common, right? Most of the times, it is somebody that is known to the lady or to the man. A family member, a family member, the daddy, uncles, nephews, cousins, nieces. You know, I would like to say here that sexual violence, domestic violence, is not only focused on women. I think we all know that men too uh, can also be survivors of domestic violence and sexual abuse. I think we, we know. Yes, we've seen boys that have been to the mice, raped in, in recent times, boys have been raped. So it is not this lecture is not targeted only for women, right? So it's both ways. But of course statistics currently show that women are the highest recipients of sexual and gender based violence. Okay, so why do we say consent? Because the principal ingredient when it comes to sexual violence is consent. So when we talk about consent, what are we talking about? Can anybody say something? When we say consent, what does it mean? Someone wants to say something. Come on, can you try? When we say consent, what does it mean? You there are thinking about yes. Say something. What does consent mean? I believe we've all been hearing consent, consent. It's not me. Okay, yes, someone is dressed up. At least none of us say something. Approval. Okay, approval to do something. Does anybody have any contrary opinions to that? Okay, let's just proceed. Okay, so approval, I agree with approval. So before you do anything, is there an approval to do it? So, consent is an agreement between participants to engage in sexual activity. So, consent should be clearly and freely communicated. A verbal and affirmative expression of consent can help parties involved to understand and respect each other's boundaries, to either say yes or no, or withdraw from sexual activity at any point. So consent is like price. If you want to think about consent, just think of price. F R high E S. So F means freely given. So consenting is a choice you make without pressure. Manipulation, without pressure, manipulation, or under the influence of drugs or alcohol. So that means anybody that is drunk cannot give consent. Reversible, the arrow under the price now means reversible. Anyone can change their mind about what they feel like doing anytime. If you have done it before, and even if, even if you've done it before, and even if you have not taken in bed at any time, you can say you don't want to do it. Even if you have done anything, you can say, please, at this point, I'm stopping. Because you shouldn't be coerced into doing it, or you shouldn't be manipulated into doing it, into engaging in it. Informed. You can only consent to something you have a full story. For example, if someone says they will use a condom and they don't, there isn't full consent. Enthusiastic. When it comes to sex, you should only do things you want to do, not things you feel you are expected to do. So you should be enthusiastic about it. Not that you are being you are being gaslighted to do it. So it has to be specific. So saying yes to one thing, like going to the bedroom to make a certain you say yes to another thing. Saying yes to what he doesn't mean. So what you are saying yes to has to be clear. So that's consent. So can we all say, I believe we are taking it from the other screen. So what's consent? Price, right? So what's the F? What's the R? What's the I? What's the E? And what's the S? That's to be specific. Thank you. So sex for 
categories of sexual harassment, the form of sexual harassment. So because it's a campus environment, so this kind of thing, you know, God forbid if it's happened here, you know, but it's happening outside, I think we are all aware, something like that, sex for growth. So sex for growth can be defined as getting an early growth in exchange for sexual favors. It's a kind of trade by battle operation in academic institutions. Girls are often detected as they are vulnerable to lecturers. This happens when a teacher or someone in a position of authority in a tertiary institution or a work environment makes unwelcome sexual advances or requests for sexual favors which directly or indirectly impact on the victim's education or work productivity as a result of intimidation and or hostile learning environment. So note, if you are experiencing this, make sure you report immediately to the appropriate authority, either the council or the Dean of Student Affairs and body. So I believe for this point, I report to Dr. Mrs. Dupuy if you are experiencing anything like that. So, Sex of words, you know, the person is in the position of authority. The person is a lecturer. If you don't give into what I'm telling you to do, then you will not pass my course. And then you go for being not you, and the thing is kept on one level. Keep carrying over the course over and over for years. So it's, it's, it's a form of sexual harassment. It's not good. So tips for staying safe on campus. Know your resources, you know. Who should you call when there's an emergency? Who should you speak to? Who should you contact? Or you should have a friend that needs, to, that needs help. Maybe you have a friend that needs help. Where, where should you go? You don't need to stay alert. When you are moving around on campus or in the surrounding neighborhood, be aware of your surroundings. You should also consider inviting a friend to join you. Be wary of using headphones if you are alone in this secluded environment. I know students do this a lot. They plug their heads and they walk around on campus, both heads. It's not a good practice. If you must, maybe just use only one so that you can be conscious of your environment. So only use one headphone to stay aware of your surroundings. Be careful about your posting on social media. Social media sites like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you need to be careful because these are ways to track you, you know what you are doing part time, your WhatsApp status, you know, be careful of the information you are putting out there. So make others end your trust. A college environment can foster a false sense of security. They may feel like fast friends, but give people time to end your trust before relying on them. So you just let somebody to be with the person, a person be like your roommate or something, you've already trusted the person and they are divulging all the information to the person. You don't know where the person is coming from, you don't know what the person has in mind. So this point is actually saying that before you rely on anybody, be sure that you have made the person's trust and you to your have their trust. So, be secure. Lock your door and windows when you are asleep and when you leave the room. If people constantly prop open the main door to the John Mitri or apartment, tell security or the trusted authority figure. Think about it and be. Spend some time thinking about backup plans for potential sticky situations. You know, the time that all these emergency period will come, they won't announce to you before you have So think about plan B just in case you find yourself in this situation, what would you do? So if your phone dies, do you have a few numbers memorized to get help? You know, do you have emergency cash in case you can't use your debit card? Do you have the address to your dormitory or college memorized? If you drive, is there a spare key hidden gas in your car and a set of jumper cables? So, these are just to make sure you are safe while you are on campus. To take care if you are sexually assaulted, if you know anyone, or if you find yourself being sexually assaulted, what do you do? You need to go to a safe place. This can be your university clinic, 
where you will receive immediate medical attention. You may also be referred to the nearest state medical facility for medical and counseling services. So it depends on where it happens. If it happens on campus, you can quickly go to the university clinic. If it happens maybe where you are told during break, you can go to the state medical facility immediately. So you will report to the nearest police station to you to ensure that the matter can be investigated and the perpetrator duly prosecuted. Call a friend, talk to a family member or someone else you trust who can be with you and give you support. Present all physical evidence of the assault. This part is actually very important because many cases of sexual violence are not able to see the light of day in court because there are no evidences to back it up. So try your best to preserve, preserve all physical evidence of the assault. Do not shower immediately. Bathe. Do not douche. Do not eat or drink or wash your hands or brush your teeth until after you have had a medical examination. So that means that if sexual assault, rape or anything happens now, you go, you present yourself at the nearest medical facility the exact way you are. Don't remove any clothes, don't remove anything. If you have to remove any clothes, you wear a nylon glove, so you take it off because your DD, so that your own DNA does not mix with the person. Because you don't 